So I'm sitting there like, all right, here mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. Finally, it's all it's all happening. And he goes, ah, we, we, we hit a snag. We really love you. We think you're a star, but we're not taking white guys. I miss the old days, you know, when you just treated people by how they were, you know? Someone was a dick, you're a dick to them. Someone's nice, you're nice. Now they're like, oh, I don't think so. I said, is that company policy? And he said, uh, yeah, it is. And so, you know, I, I hung up and I was crushed. You have to look at their skin color, their gender. There's a whole checklist of things you have to do before you even say hello to somebody. It makes you crazy. Lots of sleepless nights and, and a lot of pain and, and having some of my heroes hate me. People don't want to know your story, right? Yeah. They can attack you, but nobody knows what I've gone through and survive, you're gonna reach a point and it's gonna likely be financial or you were t a job was taken away or your daughter's job. It's like the people that come after me, I go, well, what if, yeah, what if your white daughter was told, fuck off, you're white, you can't be an actor? <laughs> you know, the pendulum will swing back and I'm going, the pendulum is broken out of the fucking clock <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> slamming everyone in the head. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Trigonometry on the road from the USA. I'm Francis Foster. I'm Constantin Kissin. And this is a show for you if you want honest conversations with fascinating people. Our brilliant guest today in what is a very hot studio, hence why we are all dressed like we're on a Hawaiian beach somewhere, uh, is a brilliant comedian, podcaster, YouTuber, a little bit controversial at the moment because he's suing a potential manager uh, for saying he can't work with him <laughs> because of his race. <laughs> we can't talk about that. Um, so uh, Tyler Fisher, welcome to Trigonometry. Thanks for having me. It's great to have you here, man. Uh, we're in New York, uh, which is where a lot of cool comedy stuff is happening. Uh, tell everybody before we, we get into all of that, who are you, how are you, where you are? What has been the journey through life that leads you to be sitting in that chair? This chair us? right here. Francis snuck into my DMs. Yeah. He took me out to coffee. He does that. Or I, I took do, him yeah. out to Starbucks, which yeah. was a bit of a letdown. Uh, so yeah, I, I am a comedian, actor. I started in a, a theater. Theater, and then <laughs> studied. Uh, actually, studied in London a little bit. Uh -huh. Dropped out <laughs> of uh, of acting school in London. Could not. Couldn't take the the theater kids. I don't know if you've you've been around them. Yep, I have. It's it, they're like the cousin of comedians, and yeah. they're a little. It's all a, kind of wretched it up a little bit. Moved to New York City. Started doing uh, film, TV, stand up, theater, and then uh, started making my own sketches, my own videos. And now I'm uh, a touring comedian and, and living the dream. <laughs> living the dream indeed. Uh, and uh, you know, your sketches are brilliant. Like some of the stuff you did during the pandemic about the vaccines and all of that, it's, it's really good. Hi, this is a little message to the unvaccinated. Ugh. You are killing everyone. It's your fault. You're being selfish. So get the vaccine because I'm vaccinated. I am vaccinated, okay? And so I'm protected because the vaccine is safe and effective. So if you're around me and you're unvaccinated, then you're putting me at, at, well, you're not, you're, no, okay. So you're selfish because if I'm protected and you're around me, then I'm, then I'm fine. But you're, but you're me, sorry. If you're not vaccinated, then you're not, it's your, um, you're racist is what I'm saying. It's, it's really good and you're a great impressionist as well. But the, the, one of the reasons we wanted to have- Speaking of impressions, I just heard Mark Norman was just here. I can still feel his, hey, 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 comedy. <laughs> what, are, what are we you're doing? You're gay, you're gay. <laughs> is that why this is, the tear's all torn up because yeah. he moves around. What are we doing? <laughs> I love Mark. Uh, yeah, Mark's great. Uh, but the, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on is obviously this situation with you and, and a potential agent manager um, where you were about to get signed. They they said they really liked you. And then they were like, we can't work with you because you're a white guy. Yeah, and they're going to use this clip because the, it is about 100 degrees in here and I'm sweating. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm picturing in a year when we're in court, they're going to cut to this clip and go, look at him, he's sweating through it. He's yeah. probably lying about all of it. Uh, yes, yes. So what happened? So what happened? I 
This has been happening for about 10 years. Every once in a while, a casting director would say, hey, you know, I want to submit you for this job, but we're not really doing the white guy thing right now. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's interesting. And it, it happened more and more frequently. I, I'd be booked on a podcast, get a text, hey, not the best time to have a white guy on. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, that was, that was, yeah. You guys weren't even famous yet, so, <laughs> assholes. <laughs> British white is fine, or, or you seem tan. -ish. Yeah, exactly. That's what mean, are, are you? Are you I'm a, so I'm originally from Russia, but okay. the, the face is like Greek and Jewish. That's, okay, that's all right. What, that's you, why you know, it's on. funny. I, I auditioned for a, a animated voice today, and I, I was telling you guys, and uh, the description was 30 Caucasian, but the guy looked like you, but darker. Right. So now they won't even show white guys as white. I yeah. think yeah. that's become illegal. Yeah, you got to be was... at least tanned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. We don't want someone who's actually white. Or white and sweating. Does white that and sweating. Well, that's, that's me Holy as well right cow. now. But you know what? Can I, you have the temperature on the screen during this? Just, <laughs> just so that's people what we understand. Need. That's what we need. But it's funny the, the way you talk I'm about- I'm doing great. Everything's great. Career's going great. Everything's yeah, but, fine. But sweaty. Lawsuits going. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I find interesting about the, like, the way you just mentioned my skin tone, right? Yeah. To me, the, I love that because there's no awkwardness about it. Like, yeah, we, we have different skin color and we can just talk about it. But we've certainly in the UK, like if you'd made that comment, everyone would be like, <gasps> like he's mentioned my skin color oh yeah know? i we just got shamed for that uh well not even for me uh, it was uh, all white people do this thing and it was directed at me and i was like well what what's the problem with that you meet somebody you don't have much to talk about at a party it's like where'd you get the shoes where are you from yeah you know you take that out there's not much left so mm. it's a good conversation starter Anyway, back to the story. Back to the lawsuit. Right. For, for, eight, for, for 10 years, you've noticed that every now and again you apply for something, you know, and they're like, eh, we're not doing the white guy thing at the yeah. moment. Yeah, constantly. One of the biggest jobs I, I actually got, I won't mention it, but uh, it was a casting director who I knew personally. She was a fan of mine. Um, and she, they, them, those, I don't want to, got to be careful there too. Uh, and she wrote to me, she said, I probably shouldn't submit white guys for this, but I have a feeling you're a perfect fit, so I'm gonna sneak you in. And again, I mean, to look at that, then I start to feel like, well, I, I, I don't deserve it, why? It, the, the job had nothing to do with race or gender or anything. Mm -hmm. And I booked the job. And every day I went and I did feel a little bit like, am I stealing this from somebody because of the way she presented it? Um, so yeah, it, it just happened more and more. And then I had an agent bring me in, big agent in New York. He goes, why aren't you on SNL? Every year around two months before SNL, people would bring me in and go, why aren't you on SNL? Why aren't you famous? And I'm like, well, if you, you, know, if you want to help me out, mm. that'd be great. <laughs> you know? I don't have Lauren's WhatsApp. <laughs> so a few months later, radio silence and I, I emailed I said what's what's going on no auditions nothing and he wrote back and I quote tough out there for white dudes and then they they removed me from the roster I got an email that said you've been removed so I was I was done so then I, I just stopped uh, pursuing agents and managers for a while started making my own stuff this agent um, that I am suing or manager rather reached out and said, we love you, we want to get you auditions for Curb Your Enthusiasm, all this stuff, and um, said, great. A few months later, they reach out, said, we want, to call, we want to get you on the phone. So I'm sitting there like, all right, here mm -hmm. we go. Mm -hmm. Finally, it's all, it's all happening. And he goes, ah, we, we, we hit a snag, we really love you, we think you're a star, but we're not taking white guys. And I was just like, what the, f you know? been at this for 15 years. Not that I deserve anything, you know? If I went my whole career without getting booked on something, but I at least had the opportunity to audition, I'd feel okay about that. But th what's happening now is they're removing certain races from even having the opportunity to compete. And that's what a manager or an agent is. They get you the opportunity to compete that you otherwise can't unless you have, you know, a big YouTube show like you mm. guys. Mm. Uh, so I'm sitting there and I remembered my therapist, uh, I was dating a quite mentally unstable woman at the time. And he said, you need to 
start recording conversations if anything <laughs> comes up because you don't want to be accused of the million things you can be accused of. And so I hit record. I said, can you say that one, one more time? You know, you like me, yeah. You think I'm a star, yeah, but you won't work with me because I'm white. And I was like, can you say it a little slower? <laughs> a little slower. <laughs> And uh, I said, is that company policy? And he said, uh, yeah, it is. And so, you know, I, I hung up and I was crushed, you know. I want to I wanna sit here and pretend like I, I, it didn't bother me, but I cried. You know, it was like this the little kid when their balloon is just, you know, getting taken away into the sky. It's like I saw my career just... I tried everything, you know, I, I work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, I do all the shows, I, I've been making sketches, and I just thought, without this gatekeeper, I'm not gonna make it. And so, um, I didn't just go out and sue them, and I mean, I worked with my therapist for for months on this, and and uh, decided to to finally pursue it, because I thought, it'll kill me if I don't. Mm. Yeah. I was I was losing my mind. I was, Francis, I know you want to jump in, and I just want to finish this one yeah. thing real quick, and then f have at it. I actually have to go right after <laughs> that. So. We'll just cut it there. Yeah. Yeah. No, but uh, the reason, I, uh, the thing I wanted to say before, Francis, you take over is this. When I saw the story that this had happened with you, mm -hmm. it kind of made me laugh. You know why? Because you're racist. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hate white people. Uh, <laughs> In the UK, that's no longer racist, mate. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, yeah, that's progressive. <laughs> yeah, uh, but in the UK, this is going on all the time. Yeah, I had, I remember an incident where I, I had someone was not racist to me in the street, right? And that day I got home what and was, I got an email. What was the race? Was it white or was no? It... No, it was dark. Oh, right? oh. because you, you, you're right. Yeah, on I, fence, I can, bro. I can go either way. This <laughs> yeah. is my point, right? Same day, I get home that evening. I get an email from a promoter saying, "I'm sorry, we're going to have to change your dates because there's too many white people on the bill." So I've just been. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying. Right? <laughs> and Francis will tell you as well. This is like it would never occur to anyone on the UK comedy scene to sue a manager or, or an agent who'd said that. Yeah. Because it's it's just taken for granted now. It's normal. It's normal. It's beyond normal. It's so normal that they're comfortable saying it, even with a little laugh. You know, I, I believe he had a little giggle. You know, <laughs> you know, the pendulum will swing back, and I'm going. The pendulum is broken out of the fucking clock <laughs> and it's just like slamming everyone in the head. I don't want to hear the pendulum analogy, you know, or any, you know, right. analogies from the 1800s or whatever. Uh, so, yeah, you, it's, it, you don't think this stuff would happen uh, given the perpetual sort of beating over the head of you have to stand up for discrimination, you have to stand up for oppression. And I'm all about that. But then I go, wait, it's happening to me. And they're going, not that, not that, not that kind. Are you tired of using bulky old wallets, giving you a bulge where you don't want it to be? My old wallet was massive. So it brought all the ladies to the yard, which was a huge distraction and got in the way of my esteemed work on trigonometry. Ridge wallets have an incredible solution for you. This is mine, sleek, stylish, and with an industrial look to it. It can fit 12 cards with cash on the back using a clip like this one or a strap. We've got one for the whole team. I've got one, Francis has one, even our producer Anton has one, but he's from Liverpool, so he flogged his on the black market. The great thing about Ridge is that they give you a lifetime guarantee, which means if you want, you can have only one wallet for the rest of your life. Ridge are so confident in the quality of their product, they will give you 45 days to test drive their wallets. That means you can get the wallet, use it, and if you don't like it, you can return it within 45 days. Because Ridge are such great guys, they're gonna give you 10% off and free worldwide shipping and returns. To take advantage of this incredible offer, go to ridge.com forward slash trigger. That's ridge.com forward slash trigger and use our special code, which is of course, trigger. But that's the interesting point, isn't it? Because if this had happened to a black person, you would go, that's disgusting and quite rightly so. Person of color. Yeah, sorry, person of <laughs> color. <laughs> You're in Soho. <laughs> and you, you would go, that's disgusting and quite rightly, but yeah. it's just, no, nobody bats an eyelid. Yeah. No, it's, it's justified racism or discrimination. It's not reverse. 
you know, you can't, you, we can't use these fake made up woke words, mm -hmm. like cisgendered or reverse, you know, it's not, it's, it, it's exactly what it is. It's the same definition. White people didn't invent racism, you know? No. Go to Asia. Go to they Africa. They perfected it. <laughs> <laughs> we polished it. Oh. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, so I just made the decision. I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. And I, and I, and I also waited until I had my, until I made my career on my own. So it was calculated that I didn't want to get sucked into that victimhood mentality because yeah. that's also a billion dollar business at this point yeah so i thought all right if i build up my following i'm making a living i can pay rent i can tour then i'll do this when i have the the strength you know and obviously you went out you talked about this and the entire comedy community went that's a fellow comedian that's my brother we got to stand up for him <laughs> yes that, <laughs> that that did i'd love uh where where did that happen <laughs> <laughs> What platform was that on Instagram? <laughs> Must have been on my uh, MySpace. That's where all the support was. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. To, to nobody's surprise, there was um, there was very little support. Uh, the support I get is in a comedy club when I'm walking out. A comic will, will tap me on the shoulder and look around and go, I "Love what you're doing. I love what you're doing." And that's about it. I'll get a whisper. So, I had to sacrifice my standing in the in the comedy scene and and i did and so um yeah i'm, I'm called crazy insane far right all the all the words you can possibly think of on that that side of the political spectrum which this isn't political at all nor are most things that that people find controversial so yeah, that's that's the new normal for me i go into a comedy club people some won't look at me some won't shake my hand but I have to kind of rise above it, transcend it. And Why do you think that is? Why do you think comedians who are meant to be the ones championing free speech, championing the right to joke about whatever you want? Because even if you're selfish, you've got to realize that this will come and affect you. It may not be today, may not be next month or even next year, but eventually it will affect you. Why are they not standing up and pushing back against this nonsense? Well, let's ask them. We have Mark Norman right here. Hey, <laughs> hey, comedy, come on. Uh, it's, th there's a lot of reason. I, need, I wanna look up, I know I'm a big Jordan Peterson guy. It's mm -hmm. like you gotta look up to the, the stars and you gotta take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Gotta clean your damn room. And uh, Jordan Peterson is actually one of, the, one of the reasons why I spoke up about this because he, uh, defended the right to not be compelled to use preferred pronouns. And if you don't know Jordan Peterson, um, they, do. they do. Losers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you eat a lobster. He, when he stood up to that, uh, I hadn't really seen anybody really stand up for something so common sense and logical. You see the protests and the, the vague sort of um, umbrella protest terms and all that. So when I saw him do that, I thought, okay, uh, if I don't do this, this is going to take me under. So, so that inspired me to speak out. And then also watching his journey, I was kind of prepared to, to see he didn't get any support, very little to none from, the, from psychologists or from his, his industry. He was eaten alive. But the, the common sense people in society were the ones that came to his defense and that might be 80 or 90% of the population. So that's pretty good. So I thought, all right, I'm gonna probably lose this group of comedians, maybe some of my family, <laughs> some of my friends, my girlfriend, my dog, my apartment, <laughs> my mind. But, but apart I'll, from that. But, but apart from that, I'll, ha I'll have uh, pride. And so I think one of the reasons a lot of comedians don't, won't stand up for this is just fear. We've now created this sphere of things you can't talk about. It's all bullshit. It's all made up. You can talk about it at your own risk. And so that bubble is getting bigger. And discrimination against white people is now in that thing where you, they go, nope, because they changed the definition in the, I think, Webster dic Dictionary where racism is not 
uh, a real thing against white people. And people are buying into this stuff. So I think it's fear. It's fear. And, and comedians are, are uh, you know, we typically don't make a lot of money. Most aren't successful. Most won't have a career. So then if you speak up and you defend somebody who's seen as controversial, you might lose your spot at the comedy club. And then the other person might find out. So the fear is so deep where I don't think most people are willing to, uh, to, to do it. And then the ones that kind of attack me for it, well, it's, I don't, you know, while they're doing that, I'm just writing and producing and filming and enjoying my life, so. But the interesting thing is the comedians that we all looked up, look up to, like, I know you're a huge George Carlin fan. They're the ones who went, well, I'm gonna say what I say and fuck it and damn the consequences. That's what makes a great comic. You know, and I think for a lot of these comedians, if they actually truly understand that and were brave enough to make that step, their lives would be transformed. Now, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be easy. Sure. It's not the easiest path to take. And it certainly wouldn't be without, you know, negative consequences. But ultimately, there's a freedom at the end of the journey, like George Carlin or Richard Pryor mm -hmm. or Hicks or any of these people. None of them took the easy path. Sure. But how many are there total? You know, you yeah. just listed on one hand. Yeah. May, there might be two hands worth. Yeah. And so it is incredibly uncommon, I mm. think. Mm. And it might have to do with your personality type or uh, how you were brought up. I'm not sure. But I think it, it, but it, it is a tremendous amount of pain to get out, out mm. of it, you know. And I know you, you and I spoke about that. Um, it, it's not fun. And so it's tempting to to want to go around that and then go, you know, play by the rules. But you're never going to live a life where you're fulfilled, like you said, where you have pride in yourself, where you actually love what you do and creating the work that you truly want to create. If you go down that other path, even if you become the SNL, the whatever it is that you want, yeah, it's always going to feel slightly dirty, right? Because you know you compromised, yeah. Yeah, and that was one of my dreams. And now, I, I, if they walked in and said, we want you on this Saturday, I, I would say thanks, but no thanks. Shit, Lorne, sorry, man, you're gonna- Is it coming out? <laughs> it was yeah, a big surprise. <laughs> Shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's interesting about your case, though, is you, you actually saw what was gonna happen because, uh, I don't know if you know this, but uh, in, in tw at the very end of 2018, I got offered a contract to do a gig mm -hmm. at a university which said they have a zero tolerance policy on like a gazillion things, racism. And it said that all jokes have to be respectful and kind and whatever. And I turned it down and it became quite a big story without me knowing that it would. And then I, I was so naive, man. I thought, here I am like taking one for the comedy world, yeah, like yeah. for the comedy, like I'm speaking. Checking your DMs. Gonna yeah, I'm like, yeah, 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 well, where's yeah, the praise? Yeah. Well, when are they all? <laughs> and then I went back and I went into the green rooms and like half the people wouldn't look at me. Mm -hmm. the, other, <laughs> the other half, to be fair, would come and give me a hug and say- Well, like, those well, are the half that think you're brown. The other half that think right. you're white. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Divided in the two. Uh, and, but like, <sighs> I was so incredibly naive, but you seemed to like, you knew what was coming if you did. I, I did, but there's no way to, there's no way to actually conceptualize that and feel what it feels like. No. Mm. To, you know, I, the, the woman that um, uh, said, I'm gonna sneak you into that audition, though you're white and I shouldn't. I saw her about a block from here the other day. I walked by, I said, hi, how are you? She looked at me and she goes, <sighs> and, and my friend goes, what the? fuck did you do to that woman? Mm. <laughs> and I go, nothing, she got me a job. And now, you know, so there's no way, and that, you know, it, it still hurts. I had to kind of pull over to the side and like, he had to go, you know, mate, you okay? And uh, I had to get, get, go get an ice cream and stuff. But yeah. to have that happen, it, 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 there's no way to prepare for it. But most people, just like in their stance on everything else are cowards. So they're not gonna say anything yeah. to me. Not one person yeah. out of the you know, 100 million views I've gotten on my videos, not one has come up to me in person and said, you're a, you know, a terrorist or piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to separate the internet from reality. Yeah. Yeah. And right? do you think you, in some ways we are incredibly fortunate in that people who did what you do and what we do 
a hundred years from now, they would have been burned at the fucking stake. Whereas, yes, you didn't get the opportunities that you wanted in some ways, and you're taking the punishment for making a stand on a thing that you believe in. But at the same time, you can make your own content. You, you're very funny. You're getting opportunities online that you create for yourself. And that is a tremendous privilege. The people who wanted to challenge the, the status quo, who wanted to point out that the emperor is naked 100, 200, 300 years ago, they never had that opportunity. And we do. Well, if they were men, they had privilege. <laughs> Regardless, <laughs> haven't you heard? Yeah. Men, men, even with the life expectancy of fourteen years old, were, were were so incredibly privileged. So I love someone said that to me recently. Like, men have always had all the jobs and everything. And I was like, do you think uh, there was a feminist in like sixteen hundred who was picketing to have like more female cobblers or <laughs> female, you know, candlestick makers or whatever? Uh, yeah, I guess so. But this does take people out. Yeah. Th this cancel stuff takes people out. Sure. And uh, I just have something, maybe it's from being bullied as a kid for being short or whatever it is. I think I have a little extra something that's just this little, you know, pilot flame that's just always on no matter how down and out I am that I don't think most people have. So I think it, whatever my privilege is, is this biological thing that all of the short men in my family have had to, you know, overcome. I'm glad you said that, man, because I think for Francis and I, uh, the reason we do what we do is also partly because, like, I, I, I'm i not prepared to let people bully me or other people. I'm just not. And when I see unfairness, even if other people are okay with it, I'm not okay with it, you know? And I think that's kind of where you're coming at it. Well, you're a pussy. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what you would say yeah but you know what i mean like you you're just not prepared to be quiet about something you think is important no no because the feeling the, the the alternative is too powerful you know i know how that feels right to not stand up even when i was bullied yeah, I remember a guy tried to throw me in the trash can and I like got his legs and like, you know, kind of got him and we were like kind of both in the trash can. <laughs> <laughs> Success. Yeah. And um, I mean, that's Twitter, isn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, in my, that was, you know, the day my dad uh, left my mom, but, but I had him in the trash can pretty good. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, dad. <laughs> uh, and my dad did leave my mom for, for a man. My dad came out of the closet when I was a kid. And I think that, you know, it's, it's kind of like, try me. Pe people don't want to know your story, right? Yeah. They can attack you, but nobody knows what I've gone through and survived. And so that's a misstep to not, to just go, even if, you know, I have friends will go, what the hell happened to you? You know, f friends from, from a few years ago or 10 years ago. Uh, but I'm like, you, you don't know, you don't know anything that happened that led up to that. Even with the agent, a lot of comedians, you know, attack me for it. And I go, yeah, but you, you never asked any other questions. Like, has this happened before? Is this the first time, the 10th time? Um, so I, I guess that's kind of my superpower. It's like I have that history of, of uh, overcoming this stuff. And if somebody isn't, isn't interested in that, then they're not somebody I want in my life. And with this freedom, what, is it, what has that done for you creatively with the knowledge that you don't have to pander to gatekeepers? You're not worried about what the comedians think. What has that done for you in your work? Well, it landed me a sketch show on CNN Plus. And so, uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> there's one episode. <laughs> no, it's, it's the ultimate freedom. I mean, there's no, I, I, it's a feeling I didn't even know existed mm. until you're there. Right. And, Again, not easy, like lots of sleepless nights and, and a lot of pain and, and having some of my heroes attack, you know, hate me is quite a thing to have comedians I looked up to since I was a kid, some of which, you know. Do you want, can we talk about that? I, I won't, I'm not going to say any names because yeah, okay. uh, that's one of my rules is I don't, yeah. I just don't gossip. Yeah. Um, which is a useful tool, I think, if, especially if you're in the heat. Yeah. To go, no matter what happens, 
I didn't talk shit about any of them. Yeah. I think that that's been a really helpful tool. But, yeah, we, but, should, but we should have done that, man. Yeah, we should have done that. Yeah, we did do that. <laughs> Way we too were late like, for us. And here's and that guy, he's a fucking prick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just there's too many pricks out there to to comment on. Yeah. So depends how much time you got. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. 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 Well, no, it's, it's a good rule, man. It's just a very, yeah. 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 But no, some, some comedians that I looked up to that, you know, really started, uh, you know, sharing my stuff and and who now think I'm, you know, uh, storming the Capitol or something yeah. or whatever the hell, <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty wild. Yeah. But it's also a blessing because now my heroes, I don't have to look up to anymore. Mm. Yeah. But the freedom is, it's unbelievable. You know, it allows you to, to cross the line, maybe way farther than you should, but you have to do that. You right. know, there's no, there's no other way to do it. As as a comedian, our job is is done publicly. The the tr the trials and tribulations is public. There aren't a lot of other jobs like that, and most people don't see comedy and understand. Hey, we're actually just rehearsing all this stuff live publicly, more so than ever now with Twitter tweeting out a thought or a joke or. Uh, so. Well, you're not even rehearsing, you're creating. You're creating publicly, right? Because yep. the comedy only becomes, the joke only becomes the joke when other people hear it. Exactly. Right? And this is what people never seem to understand is, in order for comedians to be able to create new stuff, they have to go and try it and then find out that a line has been crossed. No one knows where the line is yeah. until you go in front of an audience and you say the thing. Right? Yeah, And if you at that point find out the line is too far, and if we now live in a culture where once you've gone too far, that's it, there's someone at your door. Even approaching the line. Right. You're even talking about the line. Right. Then all that's yeah. going to happen is comedians aren't going to go near the line. They're yeah. not even going to get near it. Yeah, and I think a lot of them aren't doing that. No. So, or they're sticking to the topics. But to me, there's no topic off limits. So, you know... We're now in society, we have all these protected classes, protected LGBTQIA+. We're coddling that group of people. It's not a real community at all, but we're treating them like children and, and, and putting bubble wrap around them. So uh, I was talking to a, a, someone the other day and they said, uh, you know, Chappelle's jokes are anti-trans. And I said, did you like any of the jokes? He said, yeah, I liked that one. And I said, could it be that it's just a joke that has a trans person in it and it's not anti-trans? And he said, yeah. So why are you calling it anti-trans then? So th th those topics are just growing. I was thinking of George Carlin because he yeah. had the seven words you can't mm. say. Yeah. Shit, fuck, hut, piss, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. And I'm like, if he lived today, it would be like the 700 topics. <laughs> you can't talk about race, gender, gender identity. Jeez. What the fuck? A can't say fuck, can't say shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it would just be him listing it. Yeah. And I thought he almost had it better back then yeah. with seven words he couldn't say. Yeah. Now there's seven, you know, 70 topics, all which have 100 words uh, under the umbrella. Uh, but you just don't have to buy into this make-believe world. Yeah. Right. And you'll find out pretty quickly, for me, it was about a year, being stuck at 3,000 followers, uh, you know, maybe 10,000 across platforms. And I, I was doing good stuff. I was doing uh, funny jokes and impressions and uh, Bill Burr and Bill Burr's sharing them and Jordan Peterson, but it just was locked. In a year, it went to, you know, surpass 500,000 just from opening up the, those boundaries a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's because you're creating something no one else is creating. That's why. Yeah, and I bought most of the followers. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what's really interesting about what you were saying? It's that comedy, when I see it on TV, particularly the UK and push back if it's different in America, has got to the stage where memes on WhatsApp and the chat you have with your friends is funnier than the comedy written and made by professionals. Yeah, absolutely. What's happened? <laughs> uh, How did we get to that stage? It's all become, you know, I, I think everybody wants that. Yeah. You know, when you see a comedian kind of, when that spills out into their act, people yeah. love it. Uh, it's just, it's, it's back to the, the fear. We're letting a small minority of extreme people create the rules. And, uh, but they're made up. 
Right. And we are then enforcing the rules. The, the comedy industry enforces the rules. Exactly. The media enforces the rules. And, yeah. And increasingly, as we were talking before we started in the UK, it's actually bleeding through into law. We have laws now about what you can and can't say. We have comedians who get investigated by the police. <laughs> right. Didn't somebody just get a, a arrested or yeah. something? Yeah. Well, there was a guy called Joe Lysa, for example. He had a, a call from the police, a visit from the police, uh, because an audience member on his tour complained, and they were investigating him to understand the joke. We've had people get calls from the police. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny to you, man, because you have to it's live there. It's funny that, that they'd have to investigate and then you have to explain your childhood. They have to yeah. do a therapy session. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've just the... got this image in the police station going, yeah, yeah, you know the pedophile case? Stop, stop. Someone made a joke. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the murder investigation, hold it. Put it on hold. This guy is making fun of, uh, yeah, overweight people. And then they have to do a deep dive. <laughs> Where yeah. did this come from? Yeah. Well, it started when I was four. My, you know, my mom was fat and my friends made fun of her. And then... Made a joke, I got a laugh. He's got to tell this 10 hour story, <laughs> mm. how that became a joke. Still gets arrested at the end of it. That's uh, terrifying. It, well, right, it, yeah. exactly. And you wanted me to come do stand up in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I just wanted to, it'd be great for your career, you, come on. You want a real litmus test to yeah. see really yeah. what the limits are. Yeah, yeah. exactly, we'll Let's just to put him on the here. stage. It's just Man. you getting dragged off screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, someone of indiscriminate gender is in the back crying. <laughs> But, but you know what, that thing about just not playing by the fake rules, mm. it is so free. And this is what uh, Francis will tell you, like when we were still both doing the circuit, I always said to him, man, you're funnier off stage than you are on stage because you're driving with the handbrake on, man. Yeah, yeah. And that's what most comedians do now. They're driving with the handbrake on. Have you reminded him of that recently? <laughs> <laughs> I always say this to him. Yeah. This is why he's gone crazy lately, because he's <laughs> taken the handbrake off. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they just go, what do you joke about now, Francis? And I tell them, they go, oh, okay. And then I never hear from them again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, it's stopping people from being the best version of the comedian that they could be. Mm -hmm. and, and I wonder what, you know, we've all been through it, I suppose, to some extent, but it, it's, it, it, I just know that it is, it just gives you so much freedom to let go of that. Yeah. But it, it comes with a lot of costs, as you say, man. And I think it's a trade-off that some people can handle and a lot of people probably can't. Yeah, I'd say most probably can't. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, 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 you know, it will be family. It will be, because what's so fucking weird, can I swear on this? Yeah. No, too late. Yeah, of course. We don't have free speech in the fuck UK, mate. If I do in a British, well, fuck, man. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's so scary that I mean, I well, I used to when I had when I had thoughts uh, that I didn't want to even say. I would part of why I did impressions was I thought, oh, if I'm Bill Burr and going, oh, these fucking feminists, right? I go on a date, I want to goddamn kill myself. <laughs> People would laugh, and I and I so I started to get a lot of these ideas out through those people. That's how hard it was for me. I had to. Do that, or you know, I, I like to do Trump. You know, you know, so many the gender fluid. There's, it's like everybody's wet, everybody's <laughs> fluid, and and everyone would laugh. People that hated the 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 right would laugh at Trump or, or or laugh at him, and that's how afraid I was. So it took me ten years to even like talk, do a joke about my dad coming out of the closet because I would get shamed for no, even though your dad's gay, you're a straight white guy. That's not your lived experience. And so I had to just sweat it out on stage. And it is a feeling I think a lot of people, you know, don't want to go through. You know, in the UK, we have the Edinburgh Festival, which is how, in the, in the old system, that's how you got discovered. You put an hour show together, you did four minutes, 40 minutes of jokes, you yep. then did a little bit at the 40th minute. No, it's Edinburgh Festival, mate. It's yeah. 10 minutes of jokes, jokes, 50 minutes of lecturing. Yeah, exactly. Talking about why your dad <laughs> yeah. never loved you and then you met this cat in India that's and it where changed your life. And Nanette yeah. started, right? Yeah, yeah, that's how. Yeah, this, that so is we it. have you to blame. Yes, yeah. Isn't she Australian? Yeah. Yeah. But but we made her. But the format is, yeah. is that, yeah. And that's how you get discovered, right? And so you go up there and then you get nominated for awards and then the TV and the radio people and then you get runs in the West End, right? So that's how the model works. And the head of the awards is a lady called Nika Burns, right? And in 2018, she said the words, I'm looking forward to the next generation of woke comedians deciding what is and isn't acceptable on the stage. 
And to me, they're just all fine with that. Yeah, and this is the festival now. All right. <laughs> that, that we Carry found on. out. We found out uh, just this week that they are paying to fly or transport, whichever way they do, mm. Guardian journalists to the festival for them to see shows. These are the same Guardian journalists who then go around and review everything based on the politics of the show as opposed to the jokes in it. Wow. Or what they've started doing now, for, they did it in 2019 when I did my show at Edinburgh Festival. It, it was doing really well. And the Guardian came. And on that night... You're you know, like, just, fellas, turn, dim the lights a little. It'll yeah. help you. Right. And they came. You happened to, to go very well on that night. And they didn't review it at all. This is how they do it now, right? So these people are all working together in a tiny little industry. Yeah. So what you went through, I totally get because that's how it works. Like you stand up, then you've got all of these people against you. The industry, yeah, they they, they work as a whole. So it's it's all top down. It's the, you know, it's why, honestly, I can't say much about the lawsuit, but I, I do feel bad for these people. You know, this guy in particular was a junior manager. He's probably you know, brand new. And he's being told by the senior managers, I assume, is what he told me, that we're putting a cap on white people. So this poor guy has to come back and report to me. And it took him seven months to, to be able to own up to it. And I also demanded that he tell me the truth. I said, if we're going to get on the phone, you have to tell me why you've been dragging this out for seven months. And so God bless this this guy and people are shitting on him too but he told he he actually is the bravest right. person i've come in contact with because he told me the truth but it's the it's the movie studios you know who are tweeting hashtag you know gay ukrainian black trans lives matter <laughs> so let's get that group cast then they're telling the casting the direct directors casting directors are calling the agents and the managers and then it's the actors so that is one big you know solar system that works together. And the only way to get out of it is to do what we're doing. I think it is working itself out. Yeah. Netflix put out a statement that said, if you're woke, you might not want to work here. I mean, that was coming after putting out the wokest garbage you can dream up for five, 10 years. Well, see, I don't mind Netflix putting out woke garbage as long as they don't restrict other people from going on there as well. Well, like, yeah, but they that. did both. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's why it got, that's why it was so one-sided. It was anything woke is gold yeah. also don't no white guys no people of this you know uh, this uh thought system or whatever it is so it all just piled up and and so if if you're not in that pile and you're over here where everyone's searching for comedy it is kind of a the wild west right now it's a gold rush agreed and you know what's interesting is that their ratings are just going through the floor. All these shows that have embraced this kind of agenda and this way of looking at the world, it's all collapsing. Mm -hmm. But they, they they don't seem to get their heads around it. And what's worse is that they're like a comedian who's bombing and they're going, ah, oh, they're not liking my fucking pedo shit. <laughs> you, know, they're you know, this mother and baby audience, you know, at two o'clock in an yeah. afternoon. Let's double, double down. down. <laughs> that's yeah. what they're doing. Starts bringing the babies on stage. <laughs> yeah. But that's and, and uh, it's a religion. It's a religion. It's like being at church halfway through the service. They're going, you know what? Jesus, I, 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 he wasn't real. <laughs> it, it wasn't real. It's it's the same thing. This is a religion. So it would be that it would be akin to them going, yeah, that never happened. There was never the boat with the animals. It's all bullshit. Everyone would go, wait, what? Are you, we've staked our whole lives on this. We've staked our career on it. They're in so deep that the financial part is is what's sh shifting it. They're not going to magically change their values. The 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 ratings are are going to force their values to change back to hopefully opening it back up. But I'd like to see I mean uh, like Andrew Schultz just put out his mm -hmm. special and he said a streaming service wanted to edit his jokes and he said fuck you and put it out himself. We need more people like that to yeah. do that. 100%. I, I just produced my second special on my own. My first one's on YouTube. My next one will be on YouTube uh, and on my Patreon. But we're not even, I'm taking this so seriously, we're not even pitching to those places. That's how far away I want to be from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then you might not ever need it if you build your, your 
platform up enough. My goal is hopefully I don't ever need to go sit in a pitch with one of those places again, which I did for six, seven years with various TV shows. Mm. Do you have a website or do you plan to have a website? Because if you do, then EasyDNS is a company for you. EasyDNS is the perfect domain name registrar provider and web host for you. They have a track record of standing up for their clients, whether it be cancel culture, de-platform attacks, or overzealous government agencies. He knows about that. So will you in a second. <laughs> Easy DNS have rock solid network infrastructure and fantastic customer support. They're in your corner no matter what the world throws at you. Unless it's your ex-girlfriend. In which case, you're on your own. <laughs> you know about that. <laughs> Move your domains and websites over to Easy DNS right now. All you've got to do is go to easydns.com forward slash triggered. That's easydns.com forward slash triggered. Use our promo code, which is also triggered, and get 50% off the initial purchase. Sign up for their newsletter, Access of Easy, which tells you everything you need to know about technology, privacy, and censorship. You know what's interesting is what I was very surprised about, particularly given we've spent about five days in New York now, we've met people, we've gone to comedy shows, we've talked to different people in the comedy world. Like, I was surprised that it seemed to me like in America, there's at least like enough comics who see the shit for what it is, that you would have like a lot of support as well, publicly too. And that doesn't seem to have transpired really, does it? Let me check my phone. <laughs> <laughs> my dad hasn't texted. Yeah. No, no. Publicly? No, I don't think. From what I could tell, I don't think any, any comedians have... Well, may, maybe a few. May, maybe five tops have publicly... And I don't need someone to publicly do it. I mean... No, you don't, but society yeah. does. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just the one uh, racist guy who can't handle being white. You're right, or it would help. It would help. Right, but maybe five. Maybe five out of I'm in a I'm in a uh, system of about five thousand comedians, and I mean, like, if a new if a comedian friends me on Facebook, we have five thousand mutual friends mm -hmm. across the country. So. I don't know what five out of 5,000 is. You have glasses on, you might know. <laughs> <laughs> That's, one yeah. <laughs> That's one in a thousand. That's one in a thousand. Yeah, yeah. But it's just so sad, man, because... You know what the great part is? And I was thinking about this the other day, and I, have, I haven't said this out loud. The best part about it is, and you guys know this now that you have some success, uh, or a lot of success, uh, People will start to ask for favors mm -hmm. and butter up, butter up to you, and and uh, whatever British term you have for that. Do you yeah. have a British term Suck for up. that? Suck, Suck up. up. Brown yeah. nose is the other one. Brown nose. This is one benef benefit I didn't anticipate. Nobody asks me for anything ever. They don't brown nose me. They don't suck up. They don't ask to go on my podcast. They don't ask to be in a sketch. Nothing. And that is that is one of those little perks that you wouldn't really imagine being so amazing because that could also take out uh, actors, comedians, people in yeah. the entertainment business. Johnny Carson, uh, for instance, became you know uh, completely isolated because everybody wanted something from him at all times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can walk into a comedy club and sit down and work on my jokes, go up, kill, and walk out, and not one person, maybe more than a like. A wink. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. So, so I, I've found that as well. Like I walk in and <laughs> yeah. like people just look at me and I'm like, have I just like got a COVID positive test <laughs> on my head? Everyone's like, get the man. Or like four in the shape of a swastika. Yeah. Like four. Oh, my favorite one is when people go to talk to me, they do this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, did I leave the house in blackface? Did yeah. I? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, shit. Man, it's... Well, it's you, you know, it, uh, the thing is, it also still happens, though. <laughs> I remember when I turned down that contract, there was a guy who, like, really didn't like it, was attacking me on my own, like, feeds and whatever, replying. And then, like, three days later, when it became a big news story and it was became, like, public and people mm. cared about it, he messaged me saying, you know what, I'd love to talk to you about this. Should we go for a coffee? <laughs> and I was like, didn't you spend like three days just attacking me endlessly? It was like, yeah, yeah, I'll go and delete that. Oh, did you call him out for it? 
publicly. No, I said it. I said to him. To, right. Yeah, yeah, I said to yeah. him. You you've been yeah. saying you've been talking shit about me for three right, days. Right. Now you want to go for a coffee. What happened? And he went. Oh no no! I'll, I'll go delete all those posts now. Man, so did you have the coffee? With we him? never got around to it. I was happy to do it, but it just it was interesting to me that somebody would flip the switch in about three days. Well, that you you reached the point of notoriety. Like, where were right. you in your career at that point? Not not that far. Right. So that probably gave you a little bump. Yeah. And that is another thing I'm seeing. There is like an algorithm to it where you cross a certain number of followers or mo whatever it is. Mm. Where then, pe like I have some people coming back around now. Yes, yeah. That's for the what first time, saying, "I'm proud of you. Congratulations! Mm. Mm. Wow, mm. you have a f this." And I go, "Where was that when I right. was dying?" And I was, you know, that would have been a useful, you know, text at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, th this is what I find interesting as well. You know, so you get some of these comedians who are openly, overtly woke until something happens or a particular topic. Like there's a comedian who I helped a lot at the early stages of his career because I helped to run a comedy club and he was very woke and Vice did a, a hit piece on, on the comedy club that I was- This was, was Ricky Gervais, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right. And that's that, I love what you that's how long he's been around. Yeah, man. man. I love exactly. how you crafted him. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and he liked the, the Vice hit piece and all the rest of it. Then I bumped into him in a comedy club and, you know, I was civil because I'm <laughs> passive aggressive. And by bumped you meant he pushed you out of the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he, we were talking and he looked at me and he went, I'm not going to get the vaccine, mate. And I went, really? And he went, yeah, because, you know, here's the reasons why. I had a friend, she took it, she got very sick, she had really bad side effects. And ever since then, it freaked me out. And I just don't want anything to do with it. But he said it under his breath when he knew that no one was around. Right. Also, like you're his physician or yeah, something. Exactly. It's like just because you have a thing doesn't mean that people now have to come to you and go, yeah, I'm not yeah. Good. And I was, and I just said to him, I was like, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter how fucking pure you are. They're gonna get you on something. Yeah. And that was his thing. And you could tell like the penny had dropped. Mm. It doesn't matter how pure. No. You no. don't do one thing. It, it doesn't will matter. happen. It will happen. Yeah. And so why not? And I know, you, like you said, Mark was on your show. Yeah. And I had Mark on my podcast uh, when I first started it. And I, I kind of was like, how do you, you really go for it, you know? And I always loved watching him go for it. And he just said like, hey, hey, I just, no, I'm not going to do it. But he, <laughs> he, he said, I'm gay. He, he said, I just, <laughs> I just do it all the time. This is how I am all the time on every podcast, every tweet. That way people can't point to that one thing. And so that did really, that was one of the things that helped me go, all right, I'm going to do this for everything all the time so they can't find that one little thing. There's thousands. Yeah. What are you going to do? Print out the th you know, 10,000 yeah. things I they're, said? They're just going to pick the highlights, man. We're, yeah. we're waiting for the Guardian hit piece. It's coming. It's coming for yeah. everybody. Right? Yeah. But I the, think you'll have a, you know, that's the thing. You build your own following up to a, a certain size. When they come for you, if you didn't do anything illegal, mm -hmm. uh, you're looking so, at so me. Fuck. <laughs> no, we've got a great legal team, man. Don't worry uh, about it. They <laughs> will have your back, and right. because of, of locals, Patreon, yeah. you know, yeah. Crystal Lee is a great example. Yeah. yeah, right. I mean, he didn't do anything illegal, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he had, a, you know, he cheated on his fiance. Shame on you. He did a lot of bad things, but he apologized. He went and got help, and went to, I think, twelve step programs and stuff. And sure enough, there his following was to, to kind of lift him back up and pay his bills. Yeah. And there you go. No, man, I, I, it, makes, it makes perfect sense. And that, that's the beauty of the moment. That's why I am somewhat more positive than I have been for a long time, actually, yeah. about everything that's happening. Because at least the, I, I always get, I find it very difficult when I think there's no way out. Mm -hmm. And as my dad always says, a situation with no way out is a situation where you don't like the obvious way out. Mm. And the obvious way out is just to go fuck you and build something of your own, right? right. But that's hard. That's scary. That's yeah. difficult. You're going to take a lot of shit. Yeah. It's going to be a challenge, which, which has been for you. It's been for us. Whatever. You know, speaking of Mark Norman, the interesting difference, I suppose, between what he said and what you've said to us is he was saying, look, the way to deal with this is just to ignore it. You just do your thing. Mm -hmm. Just ignore it. But you felt you had to make a stand and go out of the comedy persona and into the real world and go, actually, this is wrong. Not here's a joke about how this is I wrong. Agree, I agree with Mark, and Mark does that so well, mm -hmm. and I think that is gonna bring him incredible longevity with his career. 
But like we talked about off camera earlier, um, as well as your pedophile lawsuit uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you're trying to find the easy way out of. Yeah. Well, I got to look after France. <laughs> is, you know, th there was a, a, a defining moment for me, and that was me not getting the vaccine, which I thought was a personal choice that nobody else would know about. I don't, I don't, I never talked about personal stuff in my life. Again, even being like, <clears throat> my dad is gay was the scariest thing to do on stage. Uh -huh. Uh, I remember I even talked about being uncircumcised once and a bartender at the show goes, stop, stop it, no, uh! And uh, it was like another year before I even, you know, did that bit again. Uh, I had to cut it out, no pun intended. <laughs> hey. But, uh, hey, hey, all right, I'm yeah. gonna be more, no. So the, the, the difference for me was when that happened, uh, I decided I'm not gonna lie to the comedy clubs and say that I got the vaccine because I respect them, you know? These clubs uh, that I, ha it took me 12 years to get into, finally gave me a shot and I, you know, I really showed up. I wore a suit, I posted on the weekends, started to make a living. And so I felt I owed them the truth. And so I just said, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna make the fake card. That was the difference for me. That's when it had to become personal because then I got attacked why don't you just lie? What What are you doing? Why don't you get the vaccine? And it and it became like, it crossed the line where it's like, no, this is now my personal medical choice. This is different than comedy or jokes you make. This is a personal, uh, my body, my choice thing, which is ironic because I'm I actually am all for my body, my choice, and so it's interesting to be called right wing, far right, to have a stance that's as pure as it can be with my body, my choice, across the board. So, so that's where it really shifted. Uh, and then I had to sort of, by default, talk about my personal stuff because people were going in and, and kind of pulling it out. But I had never had any intention to, to talk about that. I was at those clubs when there was no vaccine. Nobody knew what it was. I was one of like few comedians that were willing to go perform uh, which actually felt like a risk to your health. But mm, I just thought, yeah. I'll die if I don't do it. And the crowd needs it. And the crowds were small and it was outside and everyone's in their mask and face shield and the comedians are the only ones up there. No mask, no vaccine. So then suddenly, after working for a year for free, all the money they made went to their chefs and to their busboys and stuff. They didn't give any to the comedians. I worked for free and then one day they're like, nope, you're out of here. And I just thought, man, you know, now I now I have to, to to build this on my own. And that just sort of opened up a little bit of a window for me to start talking about more personal stuff. Never would have happened for if it weren't for for um, that vaccine divisiveness. It's so which blows my mind. And I lost a ton of friends and family, not allowed in my family's house, probably still to this day. So it was like a tremendous loss that I never uh, intended to, uh, to, to go near. Why, why do you think the whole vax issue is so divisive? I think, it was done on, <clears throat> I think it was done on purpose to prevent Trump from getting reelected again, and it worked. Uh, what do you mean by that? <sighs> I mean, it, it became political. It was <clears throat> not a political issue. No. Because also, by the way, if you even take this thing out and dissect it even a little bit, Trump's the one that pushed the vaccine, that got the regulations uh, reduced, because that's what he's good at, building skyscrapers without any, you know, <laughs> hey, yeah. boys, the ground's not level. He's like, just build it. It's fine. It's on a slant. It's the slanted tower. We'll call it the slanted tower, even though that's racist. And so, <laughs> so it's so, it's so mind-boggling, because you're going, this is... Trump's vaccine, this is his baby. I'm not getting it, and I'm now being called the far right wing Trump supporting extremist. My head is gonna explode. It was, it was divided for a purpose, and then it was easy to go, oh, the far right wingers, they're the ones that don't care about saving the planet or saving the elderly. And I think that divide into those two camps worked so good and is now the norm for everything in society. Is that joke on the right? People even, I, I'll do shows in Florida and someone will go, hey, I love your conservative stuff. I love that you do conservative comedy. 
no, I'm, didn't you just hear? I just made fun of Trump and Biden. I made fun of the left and the right. And that vaccine bullshit has now created these two camps that it, I, it's going to be a miracle to, to break out of that. You know, that's so interesting. You said that I had that at a gig where I was doing lots. Of, and I like to comment on politics and what's happening. Both, I'd, I tend to find myself more on the left or on the right for certain things. Like I think women exist, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Do you know, I, I think controversial. That, you know what I mean. I think if you've got you know uh, you know born with tits in a vagina, that makes you a woman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of far right like that. What are you that. trying to do? Ban us off YouTube? Mate. <laughs> yeah, Calm I, know. Down. I know. You know. So I think, but you know, a lot of the stuff I'm sort of center, center left. Well, soon you're gonna. It's gonna be more like chauvinistic. You're not gonna be able to say woman. You're gonna have to go. Yeah, think, oh, yeah, uh, one of them, one yeah. of those old chest feeders. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bleeders and chest feeders, that's how you know. <laughs> yeah, and like, and, I, and I, I did the stuff and whatever else, and I was talking about whatever I was talking about, and it was a new material, and I came out and I went, okay, that worked, that didn't, blah, blah, blah. And this guy came up to me and was just like, I really liked your conservative comedy. You know, I like, it's like that right comedy, like right wing comedy, I liked it. And I'm like, that's not me. And then like, and then <laughs> the same thing, this black guy came up to him and went, the racial stuff was good. And I'm, like, <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Do you know what I mean? Like 10 yeah, yeah. years ago, this yeah. would have just been comedy. And other guy's like, I love the Proud Boys. <laughs> I, love the, I love the woke far left, slightly right, yeah. androgynous, yeah. gender queer material. Like, what? Why? We've got to the stage That's now. the media, though. That's Fox News and CNN. They that they have uh, they owe everybody a sum of money for that. Yeah. Because it became the two camps. Yeah. And as soon as I stopped watching CNN, people go, "Oh, so you're a far right Fox guy now?" It's yeah. like, "Hello, what about the 99 percent in the middle? Can we explore this for a little bit?" Yeah. And uh, but you got to be firm. You can't. You can't. I just did a film with the Daily Wire. Yeah. And um, just because, you know, Ben Shapiro is um, a conservative. And by the way, this is brought to you by ExpressVPN. I have to <laughs> say that, get 20% off. Because <laughs> the, the, because he, 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 the owner's conservative, uh, people are like, oh, you were in that conservative Western film. It's like, this was a, this was a classic Western film. What, there were no Trump rallies, uh, you know, yeah. on horses or anything, you know. Um, you know, make horses great again. There was no, it was just a Western film. Yeah. And, and a, a great easy target for comedians too. Like, oh, can you believe he's doing this far right film? I'm like, that was the only movie offer I've ever gotten in my life. And I've been auditioning for 17 years, probably thousands of times. I don't have options. And just because it's the Daily Wire doesn't mean it's this thing. And so hopefully, that company will continue to make uh, films that are just good. Um, I, I love that. I love their attitude. That conservative thing. I'm like, I hate to break it to you, but Disney—they're not the good guys. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Yeah, if you actually met a lot of the owners of these corporations, mm -hmm. most of them are likely conservative. Yeah, of because course they, they are. like not when it comes. Excuse me, not when it comes to sexual practice. <laughs> That's true. They're very yeah. liberal on that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. Whew. That's. Have you no now? Okay. So, have you noticed the difference between? London and New York as far as walking around and going, I don't know what, could that be a man or a woman or, and I'm not even being, you know, malicious here, but it's, I'm genuinely confused. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes. And it's, it's a confusing time to live in. Everything <laughs> is confusing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, in the, it's confusing in ways that you don't know what you can joke about anymore. What was acceptable like a week ago isn't acceptable now. Like you can sit you a, a year ago, you could have made this joke, but now like we've all got examples of jokes. The, 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 this is why I like what Tyler's saying though, is like, we just all got to stop giving a shit. Yeah. You really do. And, and back to your finding the positive part of it. You, yeah. you, there is a moment when you have to just go, all right, things are going good for us right now. Right. Yeah. Let's ride that wave. Well, you could still make fun of obviously, cause that's, there's a wealth of material. <laughs> and when people go, you're on the right now, I said, no, I made fun of Trump for four years. There's a new guy in town. He happens to be dem uh, a Democrat. He also happens to be dying in front of our eyes <laughs> of apparently cancer and dementia and all these things. You know, 
you're a comedian. Let, let, go where the, the gold is. Right. You have so much gold here. Well, this is why w Boris Johnson, the Conservative Party leader yeah. in our country, we're supposed to be right wing. We were taking the piss out of him for the entire time <laughs> he was in office. Sure. Right? Because that's what you're supposed to fucking do. Yeah. You're a comedian. You're supposed to, and if particularly if you're political, as we both are, you're supposed to make fun of the thing that's happening. That's your job. Yeah. Right. You're not, you're not on a team. You're not, you're not a pro labor comedian or a pro concern, but, but a lot of people pick that team. And then they have the fucking audacity to say that because we refuse to pick a team, we picked the wrong team. Exactly. That's how it works, right? They picked the left team. Right. And we are going, we're just going to be objective in the middle, hang out over here. which makes us the evil guys on the right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they've done it. A lot of it started, I don't think a lot of people made fun of Obama. I think that was a, the beginning of, there's certain people based on what they look like that you can't make fun of. And I think I certainly took a break for eight years making fun of politics. I, I plenty made fun of George Bush before. Of was, course. I mean, know. Obama was a very different character to Bush. He had, a, whatever you think of his policies, he had an air of respectability. He right, was a great right. orator. He was presidential. Yeah, he wasn't making up words like Bush. Who just kind of, yeah. uh, you know, it's fantastic. It's wonderful. It's, <laughs> it's wonder, <laughs> wonder-tastical. <laughs> <laughs> just daily making up words. Yeah. yeah. Obama yeah. was cool. But I was still afraid to make fun of him. Oh, but that's, this is the other part I was coming to, which is, I think a lot of people, and I include myself in this, invested all our sort of like, all that time we spent jerking off over Martin Luther King, we, we, we channeled that into Obama. You know what right, I mean? Right. Like he was the vision that we'd all been working to. Finally, we'd arrived at this great society. By the way, you don't hear about Martin Luther King anymore. No, no, no. He's, he's, a, he's racist. But he's a coconut, Mike. Coconut, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, that's why I'm- But this is my point. Like all of us who were just like, I don't want to live in a racist society. I want society to move forward. I want us to get to a point where anyone of any race can do anything. That's the dream that our generation, that's what we were looking towards. Right. And then this guy comes along and, he, and he's, you know, he's a great speaker. He, he manages to persuade a hell of a lot of people. That, he's clean, as he, Joe Biden said. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, and then everyone sort of invests into that because we think finally, look, Look, we just, we just shut, shut up about, it. like, we've done it. We got there. We're in a good place. We're in a healthy place. I think that's why a lot of people were, were extra careful about him because it's like, don't, don't fuck with this great thing that we finally got to. Sure. Well, this also would, it's just interesting because he's, he's a black man. He's also just as much a white man as right. he is a black yeah. man. Right. So it's like with you. We can conveniently choose when he's white, when he's black. It's more like with Francis, mixed. actually, because Francis is obviously half Venezuelan. His mother's a very dark woman. Okay. He's turned out like this. Obama's kind of like that. Yeah, like he, I am like Obama, mate. Do you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? It's always been my fantasy yeah. to bomb the shit out of the Middle East. <laughs> yeah. But but it's it's a way we racially categorize people that it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, man. It just but it's, is. It's, it's starting to eat itself up. I, I'm, I'm telling comedians who kind of secretly come to me now, I go, just sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> because every, if there's a new rule every day that no one's approved of, it's all starting to eat itself up, you know? And a great example was we had a, 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 a not, not a barista, a guy at a bodega or a bogada, as yeah. Jill Biden calls it. <laughs> um, a lot of taco people eat there. A lot of You'll find a lot of breakfast tacos <laughs> eating tacos at the bogadas. A, a guy who was, uh, I believe, <laughs> Middle bogadas. Eastern or something, uh, was attacked by a black man, right. yeah. and the, the the guy's girlfriend even came in and tried stabbing the the Middle Eastern guy. the The guy was given a knife and stabbed and killed the black guy. Yeah. So okay, this Clear is a case of self defense. This is a new thing. And racism. No yeah. white person involved. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, the the less dark guy got punished. <laughs> Even though he was defending. He so. got. He was charged with murder. Yeah. I mean, the thing is on tape. It is as clear as yeah. as day. And so to me, I go, here comes the real show because now what do you do when there's no white person to blame? Now you have to pick one because right. that's what they're in the, the business right. of doing. Well, if you do justice on the basis of people's skill color, skin color instead of what they've actually done, then you eventually get to this point where exactly. it gets that ridiculous. Uh, and and, I'm, and sorry. No, gonna... I was just going to say, and also I know that here in New York, in terms of uh, compensation and support that was offered to people post lockdown, mm. that was racially... Yes. Allocated. And Coleman Hughes, who was sitting in that chair only yesterday, explained. Oh, I just met him too. Yeah, explained basically how 
what, if you were white, you didn't get anything. And if you were from a different demographic, then you did. Like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get to a point where it's just ridiculous, like you say, with this particular... Well, when it gets personal, too. So everyone's going to have to hit their, like, woke rock bottom. Right. Woke bottom, whatever you want to call yeah. it. That's, that's when it is. You're going to reach a point, and it's going to likely be financial, or you were t a job was taken away, or your daughter's job. It's like the people that come after me, I go, well, what if, yeah, what if your white daughter was told, fuck off, you're white, you can't be an actor? Yeah. You're just going to, like, let that go? And so it, it's going to reach a point in everyone's life where it's too much. I had a gay, gay, a Colombian or something. He was gay and something else, not white. Let's just, it's easy to say that. Gay, not white comedian reach out to me, got a TV offer for a TV show, but he looked too white, they told him. So he's gay, he's Colombian, but he wasn't dark enough, so it was going to be a tough sell for them. So yeah, we know you <laughs> suck dick, but... <laughs> yeah. And I think that was you that DM. Uh, and, and, and so, you know, that was both shocking and not shocking to get that message from him because right. I make fun of everyone, including anyone who's gay or not gay or whatever. So classically, he would not be someone reaching out to me or wanting support, but he reached out for some support. And so here I am, a white guy, offering support to a gay Colombian guy mm -hmm. who didn't get the job because he can reference that I'm talking about this and taking legal action. So it's the tide has already gone back. I think a lot of comedians, a lot of people are still going into this tidal wave that's actually already on the way back. Mm -hmm. And we're up here swimming. It'd be nice, you know, if the ocean was a little colder in here, but <laughs> we're swimming, we're swimming with the tide, I think. Yeah, it, it's an interesting way to look at it. It is a very interesting way to look at it. I think the 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 reason as well a lot of people are starting to wake up is just because the trans shit is so insanely mental. You, you, cro you crossed the line with the trans. <laughs> I, I told you. <laughs> but it's just so insane. You're just listening to what they're saying like, Anyone can be a woman. If I identify as a woman, I'm a woman. You're like, come on. Really? And there's no such thing as a woman. Yeah. No. That's the thing. It's fun. We're watching these, these car wrecks every day yeah, yeah. where their two made up ideas are just colliding. And it's so fun. It yeah. is. It, it is a lot. The, the Women's March, I don't know if you saw this, they tweeted today saying a trans woman. I didn't are women. hear about the Women's March. I was at the chest feeding uh, birthing <laughs> person march. The Bleeder Convention. Yeah. <laughs> you were at the Bleeder Convention. Anyway, I like the, the positive note that you that we had there for a second before Francis <laughs> took it in a negative yeah. direction as you yeah. want to. Uh, it's good to end on a positive note. And I think you're right. I think the, the, the tide is helpful to where we are. Um, but it's going to take a long time for other people to catch up, I think. Yeah. It's going to take some time. Uh, Tyler, it's been great having you on. Before we ask you a couple of questions from our supporters that only they get to see. Sure. Uh, the last question. Join locals. Yeah, Sorry. Join locals and see those answers there. Yeah. Uh, the last question we always ask is, what is the one thing that we're not talking about as a society that you think we really should be? In America or England? Wherever you want, my Wherever brother. Here's a great one. Back to the joke that the, the bartender told me not to say is the uh, execution of the tip of the penis. No, no, formerly known as circumcision. In America, it's, uh, it's so taboo to, to even talk about it. And, uh, and so for me, that's something I'm trying to talk about more. I have a joke about it in my new special because I was made fun of as a kid for not uh, being circumcised. Really? And the more research I do, I find out, wait a minute, funny enough, uh, it's, there's the reason that skin is on the penis. So what is that like in England? Is it common? It's not, it's not, no. it's more common, far more common to be uncircumcised. Okay, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> and Anton? Right, so, here we go. Yeah, yeah, so, so that's, uh, mm -hmm. I, I find to be very interesting because it's so taboo here. Yeah. And you have parents going, I don't want anyone vaccinating my kids or doing anything medical. Yet their baby comes out and they go, you want us to cut his dick off? They go, yeah, take him. And they're letting that happen. Um, I think they're doing circumcision wrong in America if that's what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just yeah, cutting yeah. his dick off. <laughs> yeah. It's a we, little far. We cut off the left ball yeah. and the tip. Yeah, you want them to be right wing. Yeah, yeah. You, you take <laughs> yeah. off the ball. That's how we get it back centered. Yeah. 
But but in America, it's it is so taboo. And I tell you, when I talk about it on stage, people are sweating and they're terrified. And wow. uh, and I tell the story in my in my special. But I I all of our friends drew pictures of their penises uh, with chalk on the blacktop, and it was all you know round penises. And I drew mine as a triangle, trying to represent. You know, I was only eight, and they were like, "What the fuck is that?" Is that a witch's hat? Is that an elephant trunk? And so I started to get bullied from eight years, eight years old on. Uh, and I even, it's the reason I dropped out of college. Really? Yes. Because I was dating a woman. I was so afraid of her seeing my penis. Because it, it, in pop culture, we make fun of it. On Seinfeld, it's, it's known as this like horrendous monster dick. And I was so afraid to show her my penis, and then I became depressed, and I lost my, and I dropped out of school. Wow! Fucking and that's what let we me need tell you something, man. About. There is nothing wrong with a triangular penis. Exactly. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. There's nothing wrong with going full <laughs> sharp, eh, my friend. Exactly. Uh, Tyler Fisher, so great to have you on. Uh, where can people find your stuff online? Uh, uncircumcised.com. <laughs> uh, it's a support group. We're trying to get <laughs> uncut. Well, my jokes are uncut. You can go to tylerfisher.com. It's F-I-S-C-H-E-R. Uh, I have a Patreon, Tyler Talks. Patreon.com slash Tyler Talks. Uh, my comedy special will be out on Patreon in the next few weeks. And then uh, all social media platforms, Ty the Fish, T-Y the F-I-S-C-H. Fantastic awesome. And just look stuff. for the, um, the witch's cap uh, is my uh, penis. Is my penis yeah. <laughs> picture. Fantastic yeah. uh, stuff, man. Tyler, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks Thank for you guys me. for watching. We'll see you and listening, of course. We'll see you uh, very soon with another brilliant episode like this one or a Raw Show. All of them go out at 7 p.m. UK time. And for those of you who like your trigonometry on the go, it's also available as a podcast. Take care and see you soon, guys. And join locals. Comedy. Please ask him if he'd do his Bill Burr impression and tell a nearly six-foot Highlander it's brutal. 